The, the, the reason I'm here to talk uh, to you guys is about, uh, I think, where India can really play a lead. And, and where India can really play a lead is e-enabling their frontline health workers. And what do they actually mean? So let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, uh, a brief synopsis, I think this is, a, this is an audience that knows a lot about it, but the current status of healthcare. Our doctor to patient ratio is actually 1 is to 1666 or 1 is to 1700. The WHO mandate is 1 is to 1000. The actual ratio in rural areas, in certain rural areas, is 1 is to 50,000. Okay? So that's how bad the situation is, which means even if we produce massive amount of medical colleges with huge amount of capitation and increase our doctors by 70%, we've got an issue in terms of how much time it will take. The second biggest issue is even after actually getting the number of doctors, most doctors do not want to go to rural areas because they want a life of their own. They want, they want Bugattis and all those wonderful things just for themselves. Um, the fact of the matter also is that 70% of uh, the income actually goes into healthcare for a majority of Indians. Healthcare pushes more people into poverty across India than anywhere else in the world. And this is a huge issue what we have. And because of these big issues, we are not meeting our standards. Infant mortality rate, current rate is 45, the millennium goal is 23, which is another two, three years from now. So we've got a major problem at our hands and it's not going to be solved just by the conventional methods of actual uh, healthcare delivery. Now, when I came back, uh, I, came, I moved back from US, I was a professor in biomedical engineering and informatics and ASU had $4.2 million in funding, enjoying myself. But I came back just because I thought that India is the place to do medical innovations. And uh, the first thing I did is I showed up as a patient in five hospitals in Delhi. Four of them were government hospitals. One of them was a nice, fancy uh, private hospital. I showed up with symptoms of dyspepsia. I didn't look this good. Uh, I, I grew myself a nice beard and I showed up uh, in, in uh, Khadi Kurta. Uh, in places like Ames, it took me three days to just get a card uh, that will actually allow me to sit for the OPD. But the fun part after doing that and waiting on an average, if you remove the waiting for OPD card, actually just looking at the amount of time I had to wait was around 3.75 hours. So around three hours and 45 minutes I had to wait, after which the doctor actually spent 59.2 seconds with me. That was the average. That includes private hospitals where I paid 800 rupees for a consultation. That was the amount of time that a doctor actually had to look at me, prescribe pharmacy, get his kickback, <laughs> and actually, you know, give me the entire medical care. So in those 59.2 seconds, is he going to use any medical device? The answer to that is a big no. No amount of informatics that we do for doctors may actually benefit the patients. And that was one of the biggest things I had. And so this time, I actually packed my bags. I would walk up to ISBT, the, 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 the bus terminus in Delhi. And I would just go ahead. And this time, I was dressed in a suit. And I would pick a random village. And I would just show up there and walk up to the primary healthcare centers. And I would start talking to our frontline health workers, the ASHAs and the ANMs. ASHA is the accredited social healthcare activist, a cadre introduced by the NRHM, National Rural Health Mission. Five years ago, there are 800,000 of them right now supposed to double this uh, in this uh, five-year plan, and the ANMs who actually help with delivery. And they were the true doyens of health. They were the ones actually delivering care. Some of them were corrupt, but most of them were actually really, really wanting to do their job well. However, the way it was designed was 54% of their time was being spent on administrative paperwork. Has anyone ever seen an ASHA register? They're wonderful. Every program has its separate register. TB has a register. Maternal and Child Health has a register. And in each one of them, you have to enter the same information, around 54% overlap. And they spend a lot of time just entering that. And I said, that's something that we can actually address through IT. And that's where the notion of a tablet was born. But what they told me, which was very fascinating, uh, was the fact that they wanted something that can actually really empower people with their personalized information. So uh, I spent time with an Asha in, in Himachal Pradesh, and, and uh, we spent around almost three weeks there. And after three weeks, she took me to her house, and she took me to a corner of her house, and there were 55 booklets there, 55 books. And she said, this is what the foundations do. They all come, they give me a bloody book, and they say, take the book and train everybody and tell them about the perils of heart attack and perils of heart disease. She says, what do I do? What do I take with these 55 books? I can't carry them around. Can you make something that puts them into one session? I said, yeah, I can do that. 
And then they talked about, you need to give me diagnostics. If you give me diagnostics, then actually I will be able to deliver the kind of message that is required. And that's where the notion of Swasthya Slate was born. A little device, pretty much lying here as you can see, that can actually enable multiple diagnostics on a tablet or a mobile phone. And that's where we actually began. The, the wonder of India, it took us three months to make it. It took us less than $11,000. When I'd envisioned this in US, it was going to take us $1.8 million and three years. So that's the beauty of it. I'll, I'll try and give you a demo. A live demo is always fun. But let's go for it anyway. So I just turned the little device on. There's one little uh, system on it. I've actually went ahead and registered myself on the device uh, itself. Let's show. All right. There's Kanav. We can go ahead and just open this up. Move this entire thing forward. I've got myself all licked. Let me just go ahead and put these electrodes onto my arms. And let's see if I can get, ah, here it is. Lo and behold, my ECG, right? Took you less than five seconds to set up, and here's my ECG. And this ECG is live transmitted to our server where a doctor can actually look at it and give you a diagnosis. And you can see I'm actually doing it sitting. I don't even have to lie down. Lie down, of course, you get a better signal. But this is a sim very simple system that actually allows for us to go ahead and get these pieces of information. Let's see if I can fire my blood sugar, rather blood pressure. Now, my blood pressure is always high. And with all your doctors in the room and me talking, it's going to be even higher. So please don't freak out. Definitely don't freak out my wife. All right. OK. Uh, let's go ahead. So you can see two simple buttons. I just press play. And actually, the system just starts itself. So you can see meter initialized. And you can probably hear the thing is actually being moving forward and moving the entire thing forward. So it's a very simple system that actually allows for us to do these kinds of things. Now, once you're actually done with this particular thing, then you can actually go ahead and open the other sort of apps that is within it. So I'll, I'll come back to blood sugar. But I want to show you some other things. For example, if you want to do a cardiovascular screening of a patient. So you can go ahead and select this person. And here is where you've actually got the WHO approved questionnaires. So here you can actually list person's uh, complete family history. So father is there, mother is there, brother. You can look at whether they've actually had any of these particular conditions. There are some measurements you can actually, if it's already done. And then also the body map analysis. So here a person can say, all right, I've got this particular area, and I get some pain in this area, or I get some heaviness, and so on. So we can look at this. We can move the entire thing forward. Uh, we can do a physical activity. What is the nature of physical effort in your work? In my case, it is sedentary. How many hours? We can go ahead and say eight. Uh, do you indulge in exercise and sports? What do you think? <laughs> no. <laughs> you perform yoga. Now, I performed laughter yoga today morning, so maybe I'll say yes. No, I'm lying. Uh, so you can go ahead and put sort of next on to it. You've got substance use. So do you use tobacco, alcohol, other substances? You can look at that entire thing. You can even do a disease assessment. Has, ever, has anybody ever told you you've got diabetes, stroke, cholesterol, heart disease, hypertension, or peripheral? Do you get pain in the legs while walking? Let me say yes on that. Cramping, yeah. And does the pain go away? Um, I'm going to say yes. The pain does go away. Move that forward. And once you're actually done with this and you press upload, you actually get a recommendation. And the recommendation is, again, driven by a simple thing, which is peripheral vascular disease is not an emergency, but you have heavy pain in your legs or hips while walking or climbing stairs, you must consult a doctor for follow-up. And all this data is now getting uploaded. Now, if you're not connected to the internet, it'll store it locally and then push it next time it's actually connected to the internet. Um, again, show you some other really cool things. We've got a um, lot of people ask me about local language support. So here's an example of Urdu. Uh, that is already out there that we've actually got. We've got Urdu, Telugu, uh, Kannada, all those are already in there. In fact, we just started some experiments with Peru um, where we've actually now got um, a Spanish version. And uh, it's just a little slow, but here you can actually see the entire procedure um, of, for example, registration. We'll take some patient information, I'll take the photograph, and so on. So we've got lots of local language support. We've got in, yes, of course. 
we have all the indian language but we've also got for example this thing called antenatal care now when you actually got get a mother uh, who's pregnant you need what you need blood pressure you need blood sugar you need hemoglobin you need urine protein and we have all of those that are already built into the system so you can actually do a complete pregnancy analysis but you can also get into things like psychosocial uh, analysis are you happy about this pregnancy are your living conditions satisfactory and how these will start influencing the great part about working with frontline health workers is that they actually have the ability of asking more questions than just the clinical side of things so we can work with that particular thing uh just to show you some other cool things so how many here are familiar with preeclampsia right all all so doctors would know it mothers uh, would also so preeclampsia is where a mother might actually have uh, a condition where the blood pressure is elevated and that might actually lead to uh, seizures while giving birth responsible for a lot of deaths in india and here you've got a simple algorithm you put in the last menstrual period so we know how much uh, what's your say we some symptoms we take the blood pressure we take the urine protein and it'll actually give you an exact recommendation that moves that forward now all of that actually addresses the clinical side of things i also want to look at something more cool which is actually the decision support system now in the decision support system what we have is we've actually got the ability to get a frontline health worker to handle uh 60 symptoms and 11 chronic care conditions see when a patient shows up to a frontline health worker what they really know is the diagno what they really know is the symptom so let's say you've got someone and anyone can come in with cough diarrhea headache fever constipations and algorithms are built for it i also want to talk a little bit about uh the fact that we've got mental health algorithms in it so abused client rape is in there which uh, unfortunately is is happening too much in my my home hometown and i'm extremely annoyed by that but you can look at the fact that you can actually look at all these sort of symptoms now let's let's say that the person actually has diarrhea uh first thing you have to do is look at whether this person requires some emergency care right something that a frontline health worker cannot handle so you look at the emergency well is there blood or mucus in the stool is there poor urine output or altered mental state let's say that no this is not the case we actually have a person who's fine so then we do routine and then say confirm the fact that it is diarrhea by asking does the patient have three or more watery stools a day let's say yes uh have they had diarrhea for at least two weeks say yes uh hiv status so we have hiv algorithms that are built into this because there's differential care that's done for that and once you actually press next what will happen is you've got the recommendation that will come up which will say give oral rehydration give lopramide 4 mg initially so the entire recommendation of what the frontline health worker can do comes up and here's the fun part to get rid of the 54% time that is required the letter to the doctor is automatically produced okay the letter to the doctor is automatically produced the letter to the patient is automatically produced as soon as i press okay this goes into the doctor swasthya slate with a little being saying this is a red case which is an emergency this is a yellow case this is a green case green case means it was cured by the frontline health worker you just need to look at this yellow means it will come in the next one or two weeks red means it's coming right now so you can see a power of something so basic on what it can actually do for it you can actually go down to the uh, you can actually go down for example right now to andhra pradesh and get these tests done and i'll talk a little bit about that so let me pull that back okay right so this essentially is the entire kit that you've just seen we give the entire kit and all of it comes in a bag bag just like this so this is the bag that you can carry from village to village that actually allows it uh this is actually a pilot downstairs in andhra pradesh and that's a pilot in punjab where actual frontline workers are using is i wasn't just interested in developing a technology that's not used we actually have it out in the field we've done a lot of usability testing and got it to a point cuz lot of people when we are sitting here we always say can an asha use this you know can a 7th and 8th pass lady really use it and the answer to that is yes as long as you actually give her a value for it and one of the values we actually give her is we actually have now an app which is not on the demo but i can talk about it right now it's coming up it's an app where the asha can actually enter the amount of money she wants to earn in a day say 200 rupees and it'll actually plot out which are the patients it needs to take care of in a 3 km radius that she can cover in a day see that's the driver that is the single biggest driver of an adoption because it helps her earn more money 
If this is a device that just reports, it's not going to do anything. So, uh, in terms of analysis, we've done a lot of work. This was done by McKinsey, actually. If you look at subcenter, primary healthcare, uh, the fact of the matter is many of these tests are not available that are out there. But on Swasa Slate, you get them right there and you get it you know, instantly, which is one of the big things that actually happens. I've already talked a little bit about the app. We've got a cloud-based TMR. Uh, let me try and pull that out for you guys. Uh, I've got some, uh, yeah. So this is, for example, uh, you know, this is actually our website, swastaslate.org. You can actually go ahead and look at the videos and so on. You can click on the informatics portal. And this is, for example, a particular profile of, of this person. Uh, this is his name. You can see where the data was collected. This, by the way, is a very useful feature. So you were talking about uh, uh, you know, accountability. So did you actually go to a village and deliver a service? I'll know now because I actually, get a I actually get a GPS mark right there. We've got the phone number. You can get her blood pressure, blood sugar. So this guy is 13278. Not bad, but his blood sugar is very high, 253. So you can actually look at this and pre-screen this person uh, within that system. Uh, this actually is, I think, our map. So this is where Swasta Slate was used in the past two months. So you can actually see that this is now coming onto our website. I don't have to do anything. In fact, one of the greatest things is we take so much time doing clinical trials. We are just sitting and getting data as we speak. right? And that's the beauty of this particular device because it's actually being used by the frontline health workers. Okay, so back to cloud-based EMRs. Just a little bit about pilots. This is the most fun part about the pilots. We took a cohort of around 1,054 patients and uh, we found that there were a lot of people that were normal, a lot of people who were above normal and a lot of people hypertensive. But the fun part about this was that a lot of them previously did not know that they had a disease. And the reason they got tested was, believe it or not, that these nine tests right now in Andhra Pradesh are costing 78 rupees compared with the cost of 1500 that you would pay in a normal clinic. And that's the power of what happens when you start making these technologies. We talked about CSR. This is the greatest CSR where you can actually offer screening to people at an affordable rate. And that's what we've done with this particular device. And this is not the only device. There are others. We've got other devices that are coming up. We've got 14 new tests that we've added. But the beauty of this is there. And then the second part of this, this is actually, I'm sorry, it's a little dark, but this is actually a map of Hyderabad. And because I get their GPS coordinate, I can actually make these heat maps. So I know where is the concentration of my blood pressure patients. So for example, Kavadi Gura and Padma Rao Nagar in Hyderabad, the average blood pressure is above 140, 100. That's the average, right? The median is also in that range. So what does that mean? Well, there's a causal research that can happen there. But more importantly, if an NGO was to focus its health communication efforts in Hyderabad, where would they go? They would go here. If I only had money to put two posters up, I would put them here. And that's where Swasth Slate and devices like this can play a spectacular role in terms of what we actually move forward. Uh, I am extremely excited about the fact that this was a needs-driven innovation. It was an innovation that we spent a lot of time going to ASHAs and AM. This was actually the first trial on Valentine's Day 2012. My wife still hates me for it. Uh, in a rural village in Orissa. And we, we had a lot of fun with the frontline health workers who told us what they want, who told us what they need. And now what is happening is that innovation is actually driving needs. They are coming back to us and saying, I want this. I want that. So now one of the, one of the Asha said, can you, can you put a troponin on it? So someone with an acute myocardial infection, we can tell them. We said, why not? And we did it. And so that is the beauty of it. I know that there's a talk coming up, for example, of um, uh, uh, infant, uh, uh, sort of uh, the, the baby warmers. So I want to discuss one more small little thing with you. And this is this little app. It's called Daima. And the idea behind Daima is really simple. So, you know, here is an app where actually frontline health workers, uh, okay, so in India, almost every PHC will have an infant warmer. They've actually done that. But most of those infant warmers are right now being used as pocha stands. You know, people are drying pochas on it because nobody ever got the training. 
So what we did is, why don't we take these little barcode scanners, you know, these little QR codes, and we put a sticker on an infant warmer, and this is actually a website that you can scan that sticker with it, and it will take you to a website that in local language will explain to you how to use that device. Right? Simple, clean idea of just-in-time training. But what happened with that was that frontline health worker said, but if I have a question, can I upload my video? And we said, sure. And then somebody said, okay, I have an answer for this. Can I upload my video? And this became the first social networking app for frontline health workers to talk to each other. And it's beautiful on what is happening. Doctors have done a fabulous job with their professional societies and professional education. Now frontline health workers are starting to take the lead. And I think that's what a device like this does. What, what your BlackBerry is to you, what your iPhone is to you, this is what it is to the frontline health worker. And that's what we're trying to do. So I just want to leave you with this dream. I want to encourage everybody to suggest apps, everybody to suggest ways to improve it, because that's the beauty of it. It is continuous you know, innovation that drives needs and needs that drive innovation process. Uh, we cannot patent this and protect it. I think it is going to be a case of out innovating and innovating and innovating. And India can take the lead in this. So this is one of the first hardware software co-design type of projects. But I hope it's not the last. Thank you so much for your time.